about uh, 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 one of my partners. Uh, he engaged for interview. Uh, then I met your team during TIA and that is where uh, we thought, okay, we'll do one session. And uh, I have been a teacher. I have been guest faculty for almost six, seven years. So I started teaching when I was in the industry job. So I love teaching and that is a passion to, you know, connect with the academia. So uh, uh, regarding uh, myself, my name is Kumar Saurabh. Uh, I come from technology plus managerial background. Uh, worked for 17 years, both in pure tech, pure managerial and tech plus managerial kind of mixed profiles. Uh, initially worked as a software engineer, then did my MBA. Then for four years worked purely in managerial profile in core finance. Then again shifted back to semi technology where a new field called data science was emerging, which is part maths, part computer science, part business. And then last eight years from 2013 to 21 worked uh, more as a data scientist and consultant role in the analytics domain. And then I quit my job two and a half years back. And since then I have been an entrepreneur, a full-time investor, guest faculty, whatever you call, you know, multiple things. Uh, the passion for market started in 2007 when as a fresher uh, with my, you know, first job, first salary started investing without any knowledge. And then wo dhakke khake jo, har kisi ki, ka jo learning ka hota hai, went through it. Uh, but serious investing, I mean, investing on my own, I started somewhere in the end of 2015. Uh, before that, it was all in, you know, little bit of patches, mutual fund, a uh, little active then staying out. But active investing I have been doing from 2015. So almost last 10 years. Uh, I run a venture called Scientific Investing, uh, which is a education venture. Uh, also, I'm at guest faculty at uh, multiple B schools, worked with companies like EY, VMware, HP, Ikra, Gammon. Uh, so this is about me. I am there on social media, uh, just my social media profiles on Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, in case you want to follow. Uh, the reason I teach is because I feel teaching is the best way to learn because, uh, you know, many times when we ourselves try some concept, we don't care about have we understood it 100%. But the moment you're teaching, you don't know what kind of question you will be asked. So you, it needs extra preparation. And uh, when 20, 30, 40 minds think on the same topic, uh, people think from different perspectives and that brings out the beauty. So I like that process and a lot of my learning has happened while teaching. Uh, the other thing is a lot of things I have learned virtually or in real time by some mentors. So it is one of the way of passing what I have learned. Also, it provides an opportunity for collaboration. So every year I work with uh, three, four interns at any point of time in a year. So these kind of platforms give opportunity to interact with right. more students and then see if there is an opportunity to collaborate and work on internships oh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of models. Right, right. Uh, just be on mute, everybody. Uh, now uh, for this session, so ask question in between at the end. Uh, it will help us to think. Until this, you feel this question is very, very important and uh, you can't park it, ask in between. If you feel this is something which can be tackled at the end, let's park it for the end. I may not have all the answers, but I will try my level best in case something I'm not able to answer, I will come back. And uh, anyway, this is a two hour session. We know there is no time bandwidth. So, you know, we have a well defined time what we are going to do it. So the topic uh, I have been given is uh, using technical analysis. And I understand all of you are going through this rigorous financial curriculum. So especially a lot of financial analysis, which is typically, you know, uh, termed as investing. And I have my journey where I use technical analysis, uh, you know, both as an investor and as a trader. I'm not an intraday tra trader. I'm more a positional trader. But by heart, I'm an investor who learned technical analysis. So I'm keeping focus more on technical analysis and its uses as investor. And the first question will come, why should we learn it? Uh, there was one more thing I was asked to, you know, provide you some of my reference materials to understand my style of investing. And I told that I don't have any style of investing because I'm open to all style of investing. So for me, having no style is also style because it helps you to prepare for all sorts of market and opportunities. And if you will follow me, you will realize that sometimes I talk of 
value investing stock, beaten down stock, 52 week low stock. Sometime I talk of 52 week high stock, momentum stock. The simple reason is I am open to everything which can make money. So I don't make biases that, you know, I'll follow this style or that style. And you would have seen the YouTube videos. So some common things you would have seen is I use a lot of data. Uh, I try to blend fundamental technical quants. I believe in market cycles. I believe in blending technical and fundamental. So if you talk of style, that is the kind of style I have, but I am open to use it. For me, these are frameworks. Uh, I'm open to use it in value investing, momentum investing, growth investing, whatever terms which are there. So first question comes to technical analysis. Why to use technical analysis as an investor? So what are your views? Uh, do you think there is a use and why to use or not to use? Uh, you know, I open the floor for your feedback. Um, so, uh, one of the, uh, most of us tend to think in a manner that obviously the candidates and all of us through our own investment journeys, we have realized that, uh, as you rightly pointed out, there's not one just right way to do things. There are multiple right ways to do things. So recently, obviously, after going through some amazing material, which you shared, by the way, and we've highly recommended it as a reading material to all of our candidates. We've, you know, we've, we've grown to the fact that obviously a combination of technical and fundamental analysis can bear much better results as compared to just being open to just one set of uh, thinking. Yeah. So if you'll ask people, different people will have different answers and there is never a perfect right or wrong answer. So I remember one interview of Kenneth Andrade, sir, and he tells that we make charts. So why should we follow technical analysis? Which is perfectly right. And that is what we say in technical analysis. Basically, you piggyback on the big guy, the guy who is moving the chart. And if he is making the chart, then why he should learn technical analysis? Sir, irony, I, is, yeah. irony is exactly in a similar session. Kenneth sir at Finacle Institute mentioned that statement. So I highly recommend everybody to watch this video and then that video afterwards. So I'll put my perspectives and uh, I have very high regards for him. I don't think he has told anything. Uh, I don't have the audacity to say he has done told anything wrong. But I will try to put my perspective, which... Uh, you know, it's not exactly what he has said, but uh, I will try to get into details of what he has said. Uh, if you look at a uh, few mutual funds like Quant's mutual fund, uh, it is said that they leverage heavily on momentum and all. So, and then you see there are certain mutual funds which are launching purely quantitative firm uh, funds, which could be a mix of fundamental and technical. So it's not like, every, or uh, uh, I don't know if you have seen an uh, interview of uh, S. Naren sir from ICICI. He tells that he uses technical analysis. So that is why I'm telling there is never an absolute right or absolute wrong. Uh, for Kenneth, sir, maybe when he is uh, buying a stock, which is a 2000 crore market cap stock with a 20 crore of liquidity, and he's buying five crore out of it, he is the chart maker. He doesn't need to bother about the technical analysis. But maybe when he's buying a 17 lakh market cap HDFC bank, he may not be the only market maker. Even if he buys 5 crore out of 2000 crore rupee of daily trade, he also may be just one of the buyers. So there it might make sense. So in terms of what he said, he's right. Because when he's the market maker, he doesn't need technical analysis. But when he's not the market maker, it might make sense to look at technical analysis. But again, depending on the style and all of the rest of the stuff. So with that caveat that there is never something which is absolutely perfectly wrong or only one way to handle or make money with all those caveats, let's look at why to use technical analysis as an investor. And the answer will differ. The same person buying a 200 crore market cap stock versus 20,000 versus 2 lakh, the answers could be different. But having said that, idea generation and in market all the things which matter is how to generate idea what to buy how much to buy what to sell when to sell the whole investing holy grail is all about investing trading that is how it starts so the first thing is how to generate idea and this is where the role of technical analysis could be important uh, many times you see when the price moves you don't know what is the trigger and after two three months you realize that okay now the results have improved, but before that itself, the price has moved 50%. So 
or some big news comes, but before that itself, the price has moved 50% because it's a flow of information and somebody who's privy to information can start buying in big way. So technical analysis is a tool to identify the demand and supply of share. And if there is a huge demand of share, it highlights something. It highlights some big interest. And the idea is to identify where there's big demand of share coming. So if you look at this chart, and I am a believer of systems, I am a believer of productivity uh, by necessity also, because many times not all of us have, you know, a uh, big network, big information, uh, you know, channel or big money to, you know, have an army of 10 ana analysts around us. And that is where the role of system and technology comes. And again, we all should leverage our strengths. And I come from a background where I have leveraged tech. So I have tried to believe it. I am a believer of building technology systems, which can help us in productivity. So if you see, this is an indicator which I have built for myself and it is integrated with trading view. So if you read it, basically there are two terms, Bhumega and Machaega. I'm sorry for using the Hindi, uh, but uh, uh, Bhumega is like those who don't understand Hindi, Bhumega is reverse. And Machaega is like, you know, doing something really, really great, some big fun. So... In technical analysis, there's a pattern called reversal. If you have read books on stage analysis, people say after stage two, the stock will accelerate. Stage two comes when the stock has gone through a stage four and stage one, which is stock has gone through a downturn. It has consolidated and now it is ready for the up move. So basically now the chart is reversing from downward to upward. That is Bhumega. And Machayega is price volume action. Volume means big buying. Big buying means some big guy buying and moving the prices. So when big guys buy, big money is behind the stock, stock moves. So that is what is Machayaga. So idea generation. Now, this company, Nugen Software, 2023 April, both of my idea generating systems triggered this stock, uh, Nugen. And I will come around it, idea generation. It doesn't mean I go and buy it. It means that at this point of time today, if I have to study some stock, this could be one of the stock. Then of course I will do my fundamental analysis and detailing and all of that. This was another example, which was after little time, like somewhere in June and pharma was still not doing that great in June. I think uh, this was one of the early mover stocks in pharma. And uh, this was another iteration of idea generation. And, and first I'm trying to, you know, establish the uses because nobody will be interested. If you directly start teaching, you will feel mera case mein mera kya hai. So I'm just trying to establish what is there for you. So if tomorrow you go and research for your own portfolio or for advising someone or for generating ideas, the idea generation system is important. And this is technical analysis is one of systems for idea generation. If you see, there is a lot of price volume action happening here. What do we mean by price volume action? The price is in the uptrend with a very strong volume. High volume means more number of shares being purchased. Small people can't do it. That means either very, very big money or institutional money is doing, doing that. If I talk of something recent, uh, this is like uh, almost around March when we were going through the correction. Huge price volume action, stock was in uptrend and then huge volume and uh, the stock made a new high in a poor market. It become very, very recent. Just last week phenomenon, again, similar kind of price volume action, again, stock making a new high. I will just stop here. I will cover some of the case studies where I will cover the fundamental side of it also, but this is a way to generate idea. It doesn't mean we are going to buy, but it means at any point of time when we are looking for ideas, because see, uh, another use I see feel is as an individual investor, I can maximum track 50, 60, 70, 80 companies, not more than that in some level of detail. Even if I have a small boutique team of, let's say three, four analysts, maybe we can cover 200, 250 stocks, but market has some 2000 plus stocks. So how can we track all 2000 plus stocks to understand as of now, what is interesting? And that is where the role of these kind of idea generating systems can come. It can come from fundamental analysis also, 
But given today's topic is technical analysis, I am talking more about the technical analysis driven idea generation system. And I will talk of example, how to build these kind of price volume things and all. I will talk when we get into details of how to do. So idea generation is one use. Next, the most famous dialogue, I think anybody who has not seen this web series, anyone? So most of you have seen. So, you know, uh, risk hai to ishq hai. So web series is good, but the real life is little different. In real life, risk hai to fir paisa nahi hai. So you have to manage your risk. It's very, very important. Else, in your lifetime, most likely you will come across few investments which will turn bad. Uh, how many of you are aware of uh, DHFL and what happened to DHFL? Anybody who is aware of what issues DHFL had? Anyone? So DHFL was a financial institution and BFC. Uh, I think uh, if Rakesh Junjunwala sir, let uh, RJ sir can do this mistake. I think all of us can do this mistake. It was one of his portfolio stock. He was bullish. Uh, the valuations were very, very attractive. But DHFL, when the whole IFL, ILFS crisis happened, uh, DHFL, a huge fraud was another end. And I think a 300 rupee stock came down to 40, 50 rupee. Or yes, bank, I think all of you will be aware. What was the issue with Yes Bank? Anybody can elaborate? So again, they were lending to sectors which had uh, real estate and infra sector, which was going through huge challenge. And still their books, their NPAs were very, very low, which was highly unlikely. And only when the whole liquidity crunch and all sorts of issues happened, then, you know, the house started falling. Now in our journey, we will always have, if we are buying 50 stocks, we will get five or 10 stocks where these kind of things will happen or, you know, something will happen where you will not expect that risk. Maybe a major government regulation comes, which breaks that sector itself. So it's very, very important to manage the risk. So buying is one part of decision and maybe a 20% part of decision. How you write how you the write. stock and how you exit, all of that is also important. So risk management is very, very important. And again, there are 20, 30, 40 sectors. You can't ma master all these sectors. There will be few sectors you will have a strong understanding, but there will be sectors where you may not have strong understanding. Uh, this whole pharma sector, it's so complicated. Not even many analysts, they understand it so deep. What the promoter says, basically you trust the promoter. And then if the promoter is saying something wrong, it's very difficult to identify. Or a bank where CEOs, they themselves don't have idea that how bad their books is. And many times even they get surprised only when the market cycle turns unfavorable, then you realize, you know, what kind of book you are holding. So sometimes the sectors are also so complicated that it is very, very difficult to build a grip of it. So fundamental may not be the answer for everything, but still you have to make money. So how you deal with that situation? And the answer is risk management. Of course, for a trader, for a pure technical guy, all of this is holy grail. But even as an investor, what we call is margin of safety in investment. The cheaper you buy by valuation, the better the margin of safety is. But then valuation is a exercise which is uh, depending on future earnings, right? But who knows the future? What if our estimation of future is wrong? So the risk has to be managed. And that is where, again, the role of technical analysis comes. For me, the most important use of technical analysis came. So for me, buying was kind of still little sorted. But coming from, I was a risk consultant, a financial due diligence consultant. So I always think in terms of risk. And I am a conservative guy, my nature. So my evaluation, when I try to do my evaluation exercise, my estimates usually are conservative. One downside of that is 
when stock starts running, if I purely think in terms of fundamental and uh, valuation, if the stock will top out at 1000 rupee, for, for me at 600, itself, I will start feeling, oh my God, it has become so overvalued because I am a conservative person by nature. So I used to sell early and many times that run from 500 to 1000 may not have anything to do with fundamentals because your fundamentals work in the long run. When I say long run is like two year, three year, four year, five year period. But in a small span of six months, when the price goes from 100 to 200 and again comes back from 200 back to 100, it may not have run because of fundamentals. So the shorter the time frame, more the market is run by news, rumors, liquidity, all of the things. And the longer you go, the market is run more by the you know EPS growth rate, balance sheet quality, cash flow quality, management quality. So I used to exit much early and uh, I used to regret that why I couldn't leverage this, you know, another 80-90%. And that is where again I started feeling that how do you care whether, you know, the same stock when it is rising, P market is justifying 50 P is also good, 70 P is also good, 100 P is also good. Who are we to decide whether it becomes obnoxiously valued at 50 or 70 or 100. Let the market decide. Because when it falls, then it feels like it's 50 and 50 people are feeling like it's 40 and 40 people are feeling like it's 40. When it's running, you are feeling 50 is also cheaper. So let's not we decide it even though we are aware. Let's be aware, but let's find a way that we decide when market decides it's overvalued. And when market decides is basically when the big guys start dumping it. And they create an oversupply of shares and prices fall up because of the simple reason. When there's an oversupply of share, prices will fall when there's a lot of demand. So when demand outpaces supply, prices rise. When the demand out supply outpaces demand, prices fall. And technical analysis is nothing but it's the same study of demand and supply. You call it through chart, pattern, top, bottom, double bottom, head and shoulder. Ultimately, in the back end, it's analysis of data to identify demand supply equation. That's what it is. So when the big guys feel that, okay, it has run up too much, they start dumping it and the stock starts creating, you know, a downward trend in price, then the same 100 PE becomes overvalued. L70 PE was also not valued. Everybody was in momentum. So I felt when I blend, okay, I know that 50, 70, 80, everything is overvalued. But when I also understand the demand supply of share, my timing to exit improves a little bit. So that is where it helps. And sometimes I go completely wrong in my decision making. I thought this is going to make money. It is going to do well. The numbers will come good, but it doesn't happen. So when ideas work and exit at the right time, and sometimes when ideas don't work or the sector is so complicated that what we expect and what is going to happen after six months is too difficult to know, but still you want to play that idea from a risk management perspective to have a right exit strategy, technical analysis becomes important. So idea generation, selling and risk management. <coughs> and the third, which I think you would have sensed from my videos and see, we all are made up of our experiences. Somebody who has come in the market in last two months, they will never think about these things. But somebody who has seen two market cycle where for three years, nobody has made money and 99% of folks were sitting on 20% losses. For them, thinking about market cycle or thinking about correction, they, they can't get their mind free of correction. So if you have seen a 2011 to 14, three years of no money making, or if you have seen 2018, 19, where whatever small cap, whatever attractive you say, Everything fell. You thought 10 P is attractive and that stock became 6 P by falling 30%. So how to avoid those kind of portfolio level uh, situations. And the only way is you understand the market cycle and you play as per market cycle by having your asset allocation in the right place. By asset allocation, I mean uh, between large to small cap, between uh, equity to uh, you know debt, uh, between gold to equity, gold to debt, all sorts of things, how you are going to distribute your 100 rupee so that you get better, uh, not only better return, but better volatility management and better drawdown management on your portfolio. 
सो आई थिंक इक्कीस में जब करेक्शन शुरू हुआ तो एवरीबडी वॉज लाइक की बाई द डिप बाई द डिप बाई द डिप सो सम ऑफ द मीम्स आई टेकन फ्रॉम दैट so if you are in a correction for 2 3 years how long can you buy the dip one day your money is going to be over resources are limited or you are in a sector buying stocks in a particular sector and that sector is out of momentum so how many of you invest in the market anybody who is investing in the market right now ओके पूर्व हर्ष ओके एनी बडी हू हैज हैवली इन्वेस्टेड इन केमिकल सेक्टर इन टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी थ्री ओके अक्षय अक्षय सो अक्षय व्हाट इज योर रैशनल फॉर इन्वेस्टिंग हैवली इन केमिकल सेक्टर इन टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी थ्री इफ यू कैन जस्ट एन म्यूट एंड टॉक Ah, sorry sir, I had not invested. Uh, uh, the reaction okay. came by mistake. Sir. Okay. Okay. So we know that in two thousand twenty three, lot of money has been made. But if somebody had whole portfolio in chemical sector, despite of market doing really good, he might have underperformed. So not every sector participates in every bull run. And if we know, if we don't pick the right sector at the right time at portfolio level, we still might underperform. so that is where asset allocation allocating to right sector right asset types all of this becomes important and again technical analysis helps us to do that so i have three different indices here the top one is small cap index middle is nifty 50 and uh, lower one is gold from a asset performance in various time frame can you see observe and tell me the unique points you see from asset allocation perspective on all these three indices at various time frames what do you observe ya purva go ahead sir uh, from these patterns i can observe it that uh, when the markets were uh, in the dip the gold was performing well okay which time period went to when uh sir from 2020 the markets were in the dip and the gold uh, started its run till uh, i guess 2024 2021 sorry okay so if somebody was in the gold during this 19 Mid to twenty mid, he would have made good money. Whereas equity suffered from COVID. Okay, any more observation? I think around twenty eleven, uh, the markets remained sluggish for. And gold was doing pretty really well. Yeah. <clears throat> so if you were in gold in this cycle instead of market you would have made money and 2014 13 actually market started doing well and gold was not doing that great this period and then if between nifty and small cap if you see 2018 19 and this is what i said those who have seen 18 19 period they will have a very different perspective of you know small cap okay. 1819 small cap underwent a huge fall and nifty actually went up so even within equity whether you were having a large cap portfolio or a small cap portfolio that made a big difference to of course selective portfolios are very different but at index level i am trying to generalize in terms of probability to make money the probability to make money in large cap stocks was much higher compared to the probability to make money on small cap stocks so you can see that in different time frames different asset classes it's not like everything moves equally in the same time frame every year you will have certain asset classes which will do well certain will not do well so is there a method to madness to identify the and when i say right asset class it doesn't mean that maybe we are having 100% allocation 
but even at a portfolio level, if we have some decent allocation so that we can extract the best out of it and lesser allocation to those who are going to, who are performing poorly, we can have the lift in the alpha. This is another example where I have taken two different sectoral indices, IT index and PSU bank index. So again, do you have any observations here? Yeah, yeah, Darshit, please go ahead. IT index is broadly consolidated post 2022 while PSU has given generated returns. Yeah. So you can see there is yeah. one index which is going down and then it is in consolidation phase and other is continuously going up. So not all the sectors will perform. And that is why I asked that question related to chemical sector. So you need to be in the right sectors at the right time to make bigger, more money. And the more accurate you are, the more money you make. So not all the sectors are good. And again, this can be done both by fundamental as well as by technical. But the thing is, when you get your conviction validated both by fundamental and by technical, then your conviction increases because both systems are telling you the same thing. When only one is giving, it might be contradictory. When both are telling you, you know, to be out or when both are telling you to be in, your confidence level increases. And of course, there are two uh, the key is also what are you buying? Are you trying to buy a momentum? Are you trying to buy a value? If you are trying to buy a value, then are you buying at a place where the chances of fall are minimal? How do you? So many people think technical analysis is all about breakout stock. It is all about 52 week stock. In my view, it's a misunderstanding. The idea of technical analysis is to understand the demand supply. Whether to apply is a personal choice. I apply technical analysis a lot in picking bottom fishing. And I will give some examples. So it is never about momentum or value. It is about how to use it. So you might buy something out of favor, but if you are buying from a value perspective where your fundamentals are telling the valuation attractiveness and you are buying somewhere to levels from where your risk management is very strong. Let's say you don't know what is the future, but if you are buying at a level from where the stock has less probability to fall and if it falls, let's say you will exit by booking 2% loss. But if you ride it, you have enough gain. So this is where you blend fundamental and technical. Or if you are a momentum guy, you want to buy in the best momentum sector, then you need to avoid the IT sector and you need to ride the PSU banking sector. So this is where again, it helps to identify immediately which sector is expected to make money. Or if the charts are too bad, the sector may not make money in the immediate term. So it may help to bring your aspirations to the right level that even if you're buying value, you need to wait until some momentum comes. So this is where it helps in timing the market, asset allocation and all of that. So with all this premise, now let us try to understand little bit of theory and then we'll go through the case studies where again, we will have blend fundamental and technical for idea generation, for selling and for all of these things. And I may not be able to cover everything but I will try to give you some perspectives on each of them. So first thing, when you see charts, charts are nothing but they are a visual representation of data. And the data behind charts is basically the trading data. So it's very important to understand that data. Uh, uh, we will try to understand. Then bulk of the technical analysis academic world has uh, evolved on the concept of trend. Uh, 70 to 80 percent it happens on the concept of trend so we'll try to understand trend a bit price is the foundation and volume is like the substance to the price because as i said the key is to of technical analysis is to understand the demand and supply and the volume represents the in the intensity of demand and then we will see some indicators because you hear about 20 indicators you might have questioned this indicator to use that indicator to use so we'll discuss that and we'll discuss some more concepts like relative strength in brief. So first thing, what is technical analysis? So this is a daily life picture. Can somebody highlight what is happening here? Sir, there is a lot of supply of uh, the vegetables and the 
less demand of the vegetables i feel okay because you feel uh, only one person is there at that shop yeah might be like uh, less people around okay so you it's a typical uh, you know vegetable market and if you would have gone abhi to everybody we all shop online amazon and all but uh, anybody has gone to vegetable market for shopping arik have you gone to vegetable market for shopping typically those big vegetable markets where you know every city has a popular vegetable market what is the yeah. general scene there yes sir there are a lot of vendors over there with a variety of vegetables and fruit where the buyer had to has to decide what a uh, which type of product they have to buy as per their need and their home needs okay and you would have seen you know they will shout talu this much this much this much they will keep shouting people will come people will buy and same tomato sometime will sell at 50 rupees same tomato sometime will sell at 10 rupees per kg why is that fluctuation happens why the same tomato in a particular year sells at 50 rupees and then at 10 rupees sir because of demand demand and supply game if supply is less the demand will be more yeah so the concept of demand supply is what is technical analysis and same thing is valid if a stock will have more buyers price will go up and if it will have more sellers price will go down and whatever we study the study is nothing but the mathematical statistical visual analysis of data to understand the demand supply and then decide whether there are chances of prices going up or prices going down so when we look at the data how to understand the data this is the typical data you will see on a market what i am showing you is a daily level data the same data can be generated at a weekly level monthly level minute level hour level what it says that during that time frame during this daily level or during this hour or during this minute at what price the stock opened for trade during this time during this date what was the highest price the stock made what was the lowest price stock made what was the last traded price and at what price did it close there could be minor difference and then totally how many quantities of shares were traded and quantity of share traded multiplied by the price at which the trade becomes the value how many total number of trades happened so one guy might have purchased 100 stock one guy might have purchased 200 stock so 44004 stocks were purchased or sold through 1199 unique trades devil delivery volume is like uh, the positions which are created and not squared off on the same day so usually somebody who is not doing intraday trading he will be the one who will buy and retain the position so somewhere delivery volume is a representation of little longer term buy so that data is separately available and symbol is which script so this is a company called advance engine so this is what usually a trade data represents your date could become hour minute week month anything which is a periodic time interval and during that time interval you will have this information available and you use this data to plot it in the form of a chart which says on this particular date this was the open price close price high price low price and you have different types of chart uh, you have a ohlc chart bar chart line chart different ways to represent this data uh, and uh, what i use more or most of the people you will see they use candlestick chart which is a japanese form of chart how to read this chart is basically you have a line which is a wick and then there is a thick portion which is called body and the way to read it is if there are two scenarios the price can open at x and close above x or open at x and can close below that open price so when a price opens that certain price and closes below it it's a negative sign because price has gone down during the day and if it goes up it's a good sign because price has gone up so that is what i am marking by green and red color green means the close price was above open price so the way to read is in this body if the close price is above the open price then the lower part of body becomes open price upper part of body becomes close price 
the upper part of wick is the high price and lowest point of the wick is low price. If the close price was below the open price, then your body, the upper part is open. The lower portion of body is close. Again, high, low. This is how we study a candlestick chart. So can you tell me if this wick is very long on the lower side versus very long on the upper side, what does it mean from demand and supply perspective? Yeah, Akshay, please go ahead. So if only the wick is uh, bigger from both the sides, you mean to say? Any one side also, it could be both the side, it could be. So I am giving two scenarios. First scenario, it is very long on the lower side. Second scenario, it is very long on the upper side. So what does the, it mean from demand supply? So in the first scenario where the lower week is longer, uh, it uh, implies that the sellers were, uh, uh, sellers were bringing the price down during the day, if, if I, I am considering the daily candle, but they were not, not successful in the end and the buyers were able to you know, bring the price up. And that is why oh. the, only the wick is longer, lower wick is longer, but the body is small. Perfect. So buyer dominated the seller by end of the day. Yeah. And in the second one, it's just reverse. Yeah. Sellers dominated the buyer by end of day because buyer tried to take it up. But by end of the day, again, it went back. So buyers gave it. They couldn't retain this position and sellers dominated. Yeah. Harsh, do you have a question or you want to contribute? No, no, sir. Just I wanted to say, the say, I wanted to say the same thing as one Great. person told. Great. Anything else does it communicate a chart with very big, long wick versus a chart with very short wick? Could there be anything else it could highlight? Yeah, Mukul, go ahead. So the price went down, but at such a low price, there was a bias ready. Like yeah, okay. yeah, we discussed, we discussed the buyer seller thing, demand supply. Okay. Anything else apart from demand supply, is there any other concept you can differentiate when you see very long wicks versus very short wicks? How would volatility thinking of volatility? What is volatility? Higher the fluctuation, more the volatility in general. Yes, sir. Have you heard of this metric called ATR? True range? Yes, Anybody sir. Average, heard about average, average, average true range. range. Yeah. Why do we use it? Sir, to know that uh, in the market, if the volatility is higher, the volatility is low. And if you remember the formula, it is, has to do with high, low price calculations, all of that. So more bigger the range of high, low, more the volatility. So in some way, this could also be used to measure volatility. So you know, a lot of concepts like trend, momentum, demands, supply, volatility. Everything is ultimately derived only out of this price data. High, low, open, close, all of this. So you will see thousands of indicators in the market, but all the indicators, mostly their derivative of either price or volume. And in some way, the intent is to draw some insights either on the trend or on the strength or on the volatility or on the direction or on the momentum. And that is where everybody has created their own indicators, but this all the same purpose. So that is why there is no point in using thousands of indicator until and unless you don't understand the foundation on which those indicators are built, which is price and volume. So this is the most basic fundamental, but the most important thing, because everything is a derivative of this. So always think about this, not as a, you know, just a candlestick, but think how it acts in terms of volatility, how it acts in terms of demand supply. That is how you have to think about technical analysis. And then you have to come to the indicators. Now, mostly you will see uh, closing prices taken for these calculations and all. So again, I don't want to spend a lot of time, but some of these notes, handwritten notes, you will see 
I have picked from books, various books on technical analysis. I think this has been taken from CMT level one book, like you have a CFA charter. Same way, there are three levels in technical analysis. Uh, so a lot of theory is there. Uh, so I have tried to put some of the theory why closing price and the reason is convenience because it's easy to opt in. It is collected at the same point of time rather than if you will take high low, you don't know when high low is going to be created. But close always happens at the end of the periodicity. So there are reasons for everything. There is a reason. And when you read enough literature, you will get all the answers. So given now you understand how to read the data and how to read a chart. Now let us try to understand the most biggest concept, which is trend. And trend is simple, the direction, direction of the price movement, that is trend. And direction will be either upward or downward or neither upward nor downward, which is called sideway. And when the prices move up, you make money by buying low and selling high. In cash market, if you are a short guy, you make money by buying higher and selling lower. And in sideway, depending on what you want to do, whether you want to sit out or you want to play in that range by identifying the range by continuously buy sell, all that matters. But usually the big money is made either in an uptrend or in a downtrend. So most of the trend based traders or investors, they try to find the stock either in an uptrend or in a downtrend and they try to avoid the sideway trend because you will never get a trend here. Neither you will be able to make money on the buying side or you will be able to make money on the sell side properly unless you get a good amount of range to you know buy and sell in that range. Now, how to identify a trend? So the basics, the most basic of technical analysis says identifying a trend and you can see the stock making higher highs and higher lows. That's an uptrend. When I say higher highs means this is a high here. This is a low, but this low is higher than this low. Again, it makes a high. This high is higher than previous high. This low is higher than previous low. Again, this high is higher than previous high. So uptrend is higher high, higher lows. A downtrend is lower high, lower lows, lower high, lower lows. Again, trend changes. And depending on the time frame you are looking, like this is a weekly chart. In a weekly chart, this is an uptrend. But if you zoom and see this chart on a daily level, you might see a downtrend also. So it depends uh, what time frame you are looking. So whether to the time frame of the chart you are looking. And that is why somebody can be buyer in the same company and somebody could be a seller and still both could make money. Somebody who is there in a stock from a three year perspective a five year perspective and he is looking at chart from a monthly chart perspective. He might be a buyer, but somebody who is there for one week because in that three year journey, the stock might be in a temporary downtrend for three months and somebody who is looking at an hourly chart, he might feel it's a downtrend. So those possibilities are there and that is why you have a primary trend and secondary trend and all of that. The importance of trend. Basically, money is made when you have identified the right trend. If you are a long investor, you have to identify stocks which are coming in uptrend and you have to ride the trend. Longer the trend, more you ride. And if you are a short guy, you have to identify a stock which is going to go in downtrend. And then you have to ride the downtrend and that is how you make money. Like if you would have identified this trend and I'm highlighting because you saw 18, 19 small cap universe didn't make money. But here there was a company in uh, maybe Nifty 100 or one Nifty 100, which was in uptrend, massive uptrend from 8,000 rupee. It went almost up to 13,000 rupee. Or if you have to stay away from stock, you have to sell at the right time. Then you need to get away from the stocks which are in continuous downtrend. And this is the example of sideway trend. It's stuck in a range, neither higher highs nor lower lows. Now, how to identify a trend and there are multiple ways to identify a trend. The simplest way, as I said, is visually look at the chart and can you see a higher high, higher low? How long it will last? Nobody knows, but the key is to first identify such ideas and do further homework. Or you can draw a channel around it and you can see the channel is also around the same thing. Or you can draw a regression line if you want to do some kind of statistical analysis. But the best way is if you look visually, you know it. 
So I will try to show you just visually, theoretically, it looks easy. So you will say practically, how do you do it? So I will try to show a simulation of a trend. Uh, but before that, can you guess which company is this? ITC. All right, ITC. Uh, when ITC got listed or uh, do you know what is the CAGA return of ITC of last 25, 30 years? Okay. Uh, can you tell which were, which all three year periods ITC didn't make money? I think ITC was very popular meme stock in 2020 because it didn't make money from 2017 to 21. Any other period you remember such a long period when ITC didn't make money? So let us see the journey of ITC. The 2006 the to 2008, I think. Six to eight. Okay. So let us see the journey of ITC and let us see how could we have identified a trend of ITC. And I am using monthly chart because I am talking about 25 years more from a long-term perspective. And even for an investor, usually, you know, investors who talk of five years, those kind of time frame, usually they don't use technical analysis. It is usually connoted with very less duration time frame. But let us try to look how we could have, uh, you know, done it using the simple concept of trend. So this is the monthly chart. I am starting right from 1995 and I have broken into through two, three different slides because it was not possible to cover the whole time frame. But we said a uptrend is made by higher highs and higher lows and a downtrend is made by lower highs and lower lows. If you see the ITC price was going down. If you see from here, it is in a downtrend. If you see this price, this high was actually higher than, little higher than this. And this low was a little higher. This was higher than this low. So somewhere here, maybe you got sure that, okay, it's a higher high, higher low. And let's say you ended up investing here. And if you see the next high, higher than previous, next low, higher than previous, and you have decided till this phenomenon is not broken, you will stay invested. Still, it has not broken the previous low. It was almost same. This is the first time you realize that ITC couldn't cross this higher high. So maybe you started here at 7 rupee 25 passe, and maybe you went till 18 rupee 50 paise and then you realize that the uptrend is broken because this higher, this was a lower high and maybe you exited downtrend sideways, whatever you call for sure, it's not a uptrend. And from 19, 2000 to 2004, actually ITC didn't make money from 1999 to 2004 for five years. For those who entered here, maybe somebody who entered here made money, somebody entered here made money. But this period ITC was kind of in consolidation. And this was the first time you saw the ITC making higher high and a higher low. So maybe again you entered somewhere here. So of course you missed this move from 10 rupee to 22 rupee, almost a 2x move you missed. And that is why, you know, investing trading, it is always a trade-off. Uh, you can't, uh, you can't perfect the exact buys and exact sells. Every style will have something to leave. What matters is ultimately at a portfolio level, ultimately at a backtested level, whatever level, whatever you do, how much money you are making. So there is nothing called hundred percent accurate thing. So if you follow this simple system, maybe you'll miss a two X here at the cost of. But if you are invested, let's say you are a buy and hold guy, you didn't lose anything because here to here, you didn't make any money for six years. Maybe you were riding something which was an uptrend and you made money. So you compensated well for that 2x. That is how I would answer. And let's say when you saw this higher low and higher high, somewhere in between you started buying and let's say again, you have added somewhere around 18 rupees. Again, you are you have gotten into an uptrend. 
Now again, this is the first sign of worry and you are again out. Again, 2006, you rightly said 2006 to 9, it didn't make money. It was again range bound. Those who could time this bottom and sell at the top here, they made money, but broadly again, four years, it didn't make money. Again, you are seeing a sign of, uh, this was again a higher high. Maybe you started buying here, it didn't make money or you waited for more sign, higher high as well as higher low, which happened here. So maybe again, you entered after four years again. You didn't miss much from 66 rupee to 80 rupee and you entered here and in four years, maybe you played somewhere else, which was in a better uptrend. Then again, a higher high, higher low, uptrend, down to sideway, uptrend, sideway, uptrend. So we were in 2011 here. Then again, higher high, higher low, higher high higher low. See, we get shaken by the daily movements. But when you look at a weekly chart, your peace will increase little more. When you look at a monthly chart, your peace will increase more. So the shorter you go in the time frame, the higher the volatility and the more is the noise and more difficult actually it is there to make money. Uh, however, the world acts in the reverse way. Now here for the first time, you are not at a higher low. If you say it's equal, it's not in a downtrend, it's more sideways. Maybe you exited and this is again a lower high. So maybe somewhere here you ended up exiting, maybe two and a half years you didn't make money and then you exited. And then you saw again a higher high, higher low being met and maybe you added here. So far so good, still it is higher than previous low, but now you see a lower high and you start exiting. Still it's mixed because the high is lower. So maybe this period, despite of investing, you might not have made money. And then finally you would have exited the moment this low got broken. You exited here. This could be a period where you might be invested for three years and still didn't make enough money. And then at least you got saved because the moment you saw this low getting broken, first the lower high and then this getting broken, you would have exited at 250 and you would have maybe avoided all of this. And then this was again the first sign of uh, higher low, higher high, higher low. Again, this is a sign of uptrend. Again, maybe entered around 200 rupee. And then again, uh, I think it went up to 400. So a very, very simple concept of visual interpretation can also tell you which is in the uptrend, which is in the sideway trend, which is in the downtrend. Uh, the idea was to use this simulation animation just to highlight how to look at higher highs and higher low. If you can convert it into a mathematical model, that is what is your uptrend model. I will take one more example of trend identification. So which are the which is the sector which has created huge wealth in USA and India in last 20, 25 years? Common sector. IT. 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 NASDAQ, if you see, NASDAQ has beaten S&P right and left. ITC, I think 20% plus CAGR. Uh, this index also very good CAGR. I think 18% plus uh, uh, Again, if you apply the same concept and this chart is NASDAQ right from 1991. And yeah, Akshay, you want to say something? Uh, yes, sir. I had a very basic doubt over here. I meant to say when we discuss things like, you know, which sector has made the, the most uh, money for investors in the last year or so. So doesn't it depend more on the which type of instruments we use? Which type of? Instruments we use. We say Hello. Uh, Am I audible? Uh, Hello. Yeah. By instrument, do you mean to say equity or debt, or you mean to say FNO or something? FNO also in when the market is say consolidating or yeah. See, my uh, yeah, yeah. I am talking more about the cash market and a twenty-year period and uh, throughout the twenty-year period. So more long to long. What is common in India and US, which throughout made money. So again, there could be multiple answers also, but IT is one common thing. So whenever I ask people, nobody has so far told me anything except IT. <laughs> that is how it has worked. Okay.
Uh, okay, I hope that answers. Yes, sir. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. So if you see IT, though it has made money, it has gone through huge drawdowns. If you see when the IT bubble burst, this index from 5,500 came down to 1,350. However, long-term investor you are, if you see your money wiping off by 90% and despite of you making tons of money, nobody cares about how much money has been made. When you see something which was there and 90% gets wiped off, it's not a great feeling. And if you look again, as a fundamental investor, we will always feel things are overvalued. But when an Infosys trades at 150p, 250p, how do you decide that what is overvalued? Whether 100 is overvalued or 150 is overvalued or 200 is overvalued. So again, if you look at the similar concept of higher highs, higher lows, it helped you to write this indices for the whole journey, maybe two different two exits. Maybe you got one exit somewhere here and another exit somewhere here in this decade. But when this big 90% fall came, you could have exited somewhere here. So again, maybe you could have lost 30-40%, but still you would have exited just by following this thing and you would have avoided such a huge, huge fall. And then again, the same story started playing out and this is where finally this is where it bottomed after 90% wipe off. So these kind of big wipe offs, that is where again the uses of, you know, these kind of systems come. And when you'll see the momentum investing, there are a lot of, you know, momentum investing funds and small cases, everybody presents their back testing. You will see a lot of the alpha which has been generated in backtesting that has happened because these kind of systems give you early exit where the stock or the script or the sector or the index or the market would have corrected 50-60% but you exited with a 15-20% kind of loss and that is how you generate that 30-40% kind of you know alpha and when you backtest a big portion of alpha contribution or weightage comes from you know these kind of scenarios like a 2008 market or a 2020 market or at a sector level or those kind of scenarios but again another example of how you could have ride the trend for a decade and then exited at the right time now before we discuss any indicator like a moving average or rsi or adx the first thing is, as I said, it's very, very important to understand price because all are derived from price. And this whole trend analysis, which I showed you, not even as it is not like I can't use an indicator or a moving line or a golden crossover or showing, you know, 13 week moving line is above 20 week moving line. All of that is possible, but all are happening only because of price. And what I wanted to highlight is even by looking at price, you can get a guess of those things. So before you look at any indicator, first try to understand all of that from price because all of these are derivatives of price. And then there are a few more things on price itself. The longer it takes a base to form, what does it mean for a long, long time? Lot of buyers and sellers, they have changed hands. So the new buyers have emerged and if the price has not gone down, that means repeatedly you are getting more and more demand here, more and more demand here. So you will hear certain things in the market. Uh, like there is a very popular saying that the longer the base after which the bigger is the move. Why? What is the reason? The reason is simple. The longer the base, the more old shareholders would have exited and the more new shareholders who have not made money, they might have come and they might be holding the stock. And when the new guy is coming and he's not allowing this price to fall below it, that means there's a constant buyer which is evolving. And then the prices move up because the sellers dry up. If everybody has sold, and usually it happens in stocks which are very neglected, everybody is super bearish because everybody has lost money. But the moment the big run comes, then the moves are also massive. So a lot of statements you will hear, but my suggestion is always think what it means in, in terms of demand supply, what it means longer base in terms of buying pattern and selling pattern, all of that. Why again and again a stock is always not falling beyond this price? 
because the person who believes this is an attractive price, he might be coming again and again, he might be buying here. That is what becomes support. And why there is a constant sell at a certain level? Because somebody who feels this stock is overvalued here, whenever it comes here, he starts dumping. Maybe he's a big guy, he can't dump everything at one go. So the moment he starts dumping, the price comes down. Then he feels, okay, okay, no, it's not that bad at this price. There's a value. But maybe again, when it comes, he thinks, okay, again, the value is gone. Let me sell. So that is what becomes resistance. So always think in terms of demand and supply and you will have your answers, you know, around demand, supply, support, resistance, those terms. Yeah, Harsh. Sir, I was having a small doubt in this. That yeah. uh, if the, you as you told that the longer time it takes to form the base, the higher it will be the move. So, sir, uh, uh, the, is it compulsory that volume should support the same base? Yeah, so volume, so price is the direction and volume is the evidence. So after price, I will come to volume. Uh, there is a separate section on volume. So price tells you the direction, but it doesn't tell you what is the strength of this direction. And volume gives you the confidence that this is not being done by any acha ucha guy, some small guy. It is being done by guys who have big money power. So let's say if this is a thousand crore market cap stock and let's say 70% is held by promoter. That means you have 300 crore of liquidity in the market. And let's say the share price is, let's say here, the share price is 100 rupee. And let us say on this particular date, 10 lakh stocks got traded. So 10 lakh multiplied by 100 is 10 crore. So you had 300 crore of float in the market and on a single day, 10 crore worth share got traded. Uh, 300 crore ka 10%, uh, 3%, more than 3%. So many shareholders are there. What is the chance at one day out of that 30% float, one big guy is coming and buying 3%. That is almost 10% of that he's buying on a single day. That means it can't be a small person like you and me. It might be institutional fund, mutual fund. And mutual funds, institutions, usually until it's an arbitrage position or a hedge position, they don't do it with a mindset to buy today and sell tomorrow. So of course that tells you that is a, there is a big money, there is institutional money and all that supply has been nibbled. Many times you will see when the stocks consolidate institutions, they keep buying for six months. The reason is they can't buy in one go because if they buy all they want in one go, the price will go up by 20, 30% and you will see when high volume buying happens, 10% uh, up move is there. But if they want to buy more, how can they do? So they distribute their buys across six month period and you will see here also uh, if you see here there is a big volume buying then again here there is a big volume buying when it is coming down the volumes are dry again there is a big volume buying again the volumes are dry and then the price started moving and again even in this up move when the up move happened with big volume buying and the down move is with very very small volume again up move with big volume so volume itself is a separate chapter a high volume is always not good but when stocks have fallen a lot and then they're consolidating and then the buy and the up move is coming on high volumes and the corrections are happening with low volumes, it is a sign of institutional buying. And when there is a sign of institutional buying with an uptrend, the chances are the price will go up and up. So price is the direction and volume is the evidence and bigger the volume, stronger is the evidence. I hope uh, this helps. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. So price says a lot of things, zone of congestion. So you will hear these things, head and shoulder pattern and all of that. What is happening actually? A repeated attempt is being made to cross a certain price and it is not able to cross that level or that band. So if you see here from June 2016 to 18, 2018 June, this stock traded in this band. It means whenever the stock is in this band, there's too much of selling. It is not able to cross this range. It is not able to go above this range. It is not able to go below this range. So the moment it will break this decisive range, either in the upper side or lower side, a new flow is going to come. 
and ultimately what happened here the moment it broke this resistance that means it broke the confidence of so many people who were engaged here so usually when the stock is stuck in a range for a long time if it goes upper side you will get a massive bull run if it goes in the downside you get a major correction and that is what happened the moment it broke see uh, here it didn't break here it didn't break didn't break didn't break didn't break didn't break did, and again it is never a exact line it could be always a range also of maybe 5 10 rupees didn't break didn't break finally when it broke and see now when it is trying to go up the same thing which was acting as a support now the same thing has become a resistance and then you are getting a downside this is nothing but, but this is a demand supply zone so whenever a demand supply zone is broken either on the upper side or lower side a new wave of downtrend or uptrend happens the same thing you represent in difficult top is nothing but three attempts to cross this over supply zone that is how you have to think in terms of demand and supply and why after crossing the same thing becomes a support many times is because the buyer who was creating the supply he was gone and somebody else purchased and he is the new buyer so for him it is attractive so when it is coming here again he might think of buying it that is the general logic it's not like it will work 100% no technical analysis works 100% uh, in fact, when you read books on different patterns, also there is a back testing given that this pattern has this success rate, that success rate. So nothing is 100%, but this is the general way how it works. And sometimes you may not have any pattern as such as a copy book style, like head and shoulder or double top, triple top. But you can see on certain stocks, certain patterns become very obvious. It comes from what kind of investors have been associated with that stock, how they buy, how they sell. Again, it's all observation. So there is a company called LT Food. If you observe this company always after an uptrend, here the corrections are more like this kind of rectangular boxes. Again, up move, again, this kind of correction, again, this kind of correction. So charts are always a thing of observation and at times you might observe something which might be beyond textbook or maybe we have not read there might be a pattern for that and support and resistance which you hear they are nothing but they are derivative of price only as a zone of supply or a zone of demand and when that zone of demand gets broken then you get a fall and when that zone of supply is nibbled by strong buyers you get a uptrend and as I explained, volume is independent of price, but it needs to be referred with price because price tells you the direction and volumes give you the weightage of evidence. So this is what the slide I think I already told you. Volume tells about institutional presence and bigger the money presence, more are the chances to drive it if they have a long term agenda involved with that particular stock. And why you see breakout stock, people say look for breakout stocks with high volume is because that breakout level was acting as a resistance level and there was a lot of supply coming and if a high volume supply was nibbled and still that price was crossed that means there is a probability that all the high volume supply has already been nibbled by a new buyer and because that new buyer has nibbled all the supply and he is there to make money. Now he is not going to sell. So all the supply has been observed, uh, absorbed. And now you will have a new run up because you don't have more sellers left. And the new buyer is not going to sell. So that is why the people tell that even when stock is breaking a resistance, look if there is enough volume there or not. Else the chances are it could be a false breakout. Or there could be missing volume for a long time after a major fall and long consolidation. And then you get a huge volume buying coming into that counter. It happens a lot with cyclic kind of companies which are out of fashion for three, four years. And then the cycle is coming. And then the insider, they understand. Like if you look at, uh, you know, a lot of commodities, export companies, people who are dealing with them, their vendors, their suppliers, they get a pulse of market that the market is changing. 
and basically those guys if they buy it so insider doesn't always mean uh, sorry a uh, big guys doesn't always mean only institutions it might be possible that uh, you know even a uh, small companies like 3000 4000 crore market cap companies uh, you might have people with uh, you know 10 15 crore of portfolio who might be a vendor who might be a customer and they understand the market they are the people on the ground and if after 3 4 years they might be seeing the change of cycle there could be a high volume buying also the thing is see technical also gives you certain pattern certain idea of demand supply fundamental gives you certain idea of uh, performance of valuation of growth the more evidences you get the higher your conviction grows so technical analysis stand alone also may not be best fundamental stand alone also may not be best if both of the thing are communicating the same thing then your chances and your conviction increases so something which was totally out of fashion and now all of sudden there is lot of interest there has to be some reason so like if you see loras lab loras lab did a massive capex between 2018 to 20 and they were a api company and most of the capex was done for the formulation business so they were basically converting from a api business to formulation business and when they were doing all this capex you know they have to hire people they have to hire employees they have to do the it's a pharma company so you know they have to keep the plant ready they have to get the us fda regulator audit done so lot of money is being spent both in terms of capex and opex and uh, maybe loans were raised actually loans were raised so your interest cost is increasing uh, because you have a new asset your depreciation is increasing so your pnl is not looking so good so that is why chart are depressed but somebody who sense the opportunity that once that successful audit is done and this company will shift from a api company to a formulation company so in the value chain the formulation companies get bigger margin in general than the api companies so there will be a margin improvement there will be a growth coming and then because market has dumped this stock the valuations have become attractive those people could understand and they build their position and it's not like position was built in one day if you see the stock stopped falling from here this became the new support it touched three four time and here also you can see see this volume is looking small because you have such big volumes if you exclude it and look from a relative perspective on buying the volume was high in the correction the selling volume was low i am repeating the same thing again on buying the volume was high on the selling the volume was low this was the day when a old institution exited so mistakes can happen from everybody uh the person who manages this institutional fund i remember he was asked the biggest learning of this year and he was telling it was not on what to buy but it was on what be sold wrongly and they stayed for 3 years and when the actual time came to reap benefits they exited but a big supply was nibbled by again big institutions and then the stock didn't see the same price back again so that is where you know price volume everything is important this is my personal mistake so uh, i used to be it's not like i didn't study technical i did study technical but the application of technical for me was very limited till 2017 18 and in the beginning i made a point when sectors are so complicated that in front of your eyes it looks nothing is bad but you know after 6 month what bad happened but before that all the price crashes happened how do you deal with such situations and i have found financials pharma they are very very complicated industry because of the nature of industry because of the nature of business finance is a highly leveraged business the moment 4 5% of your books go bad maybe 50% of your net worth is gone so in uh, you know in finance a 5% npa the whole world can shatter in a pharma one us fda issue and one ban on one plant 20% of revenue gone and these things how do you know as a retail you won't have this information you will know only when the filing has been done but the person who has done the audit he might have spoken to 20 people the employees who were there when the audit was being done they might know they might have told their friends they might have started selling up so i didn't sell this stock and again i spoke about support and resistance uh, highlighting the zones of demand and supply uh, sometimes there are dynamic support dynamic resistance 
uh, the moving average is also a concept which is for dynamic support. Dynamic support means the line is changing. It's not a constant line, but the moving average line itself is acting as a support. So 200 day moving average, I think uh, it's a very popular moving average number, which is considered as a long term support. If you see this black line, which is the 200 day moving average, see how many times it acted as a support here, 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 here also. This was broken with huge volumes. I didn't sell here. So for me, it was a learning when I don't have strong grip and there are industries where we will never know what happened until, you know, the whole story is over. The bad news started coming later, but the price reflected it first. So when you see a price breaking key support lines by a huge volume, it's a significant bearish symbol. So there are times when we have to first sell and then think and explore why did it happen. And there are times when we can still have time to explore. So when you see these kind of high volume sell off, breaking the critical support lines. These are times when first we need to sell and then we need to think what happened because if we leave it for 15 days, havoc can happen. And many fraud stocks where the fraud gets identified later on, you will see these kind of chart patterns happening. So volume, whether we are, whether the buying is happening or the selling is happening, volume adds to that significance and to the weightage. Here it's buying where again, you can see lower level, high volume buying when the correction is happening, nothing low volume, again, high volume buying again, fall, nothing, same support range. Whenever it touches lower, that means some institution is slowly accumulating. They're spending three, four, five months so that they can buy their desired price. Actually, when you will go and read this data along with the shareholding data of three quarters, it is very easy to relate who was the institution who was selling and who was buying. There was an institution which had 7% holding, which was liquidating. And there were two, three institutions who were buying. The moment the 7% supply got over, this stock started going in uptrend. So there was one big institution which was regularly selling and two, three institutions. It took them almost six, seven, eight months to nibble the whole supply the moment that supply was nibbled and this was the time when market was doing really well after March, but this stock didn't move till November because of that oversupply. So that is why we say technical analysis is a game of demand supply and any supplementary data, which can help you to analyze that demand supply that will add more value to that analysis. So shareholding data tells about who are the buyers and who are the sellers. So when you add this technical analysis with shareholding data, you may not get every company where this kind of data is available. You know the institution. But if you come to know, it's an added advantage. Here in Greenply, if you would have looked, you were knowing that Westbridge Capital was the seller and Plutus were the buyer. And you could see slowly Westbridge stake is coming down and the other side buying institution, they are able to buy at these prices. The moment it went zero and the quarterly declaration came later on. But if you had the numbers with you, and you calculated how many volumes were traded this day. It was obvious that Westbridge has exhausted all its share somewhere here. And then, you know, you are writing this journey. So that is how you have to blend price, volume, shareholding data, all of that. So now I'll go to the case studies because we don't have much time. So I'll just go to some of the case studies. So support resistance also you got it zone of supply and zone of demand. It could be a static line or it could be even something like a moving average. But let's see some. So basically whatever indicators you will learn, everything will be a derivative of price and volume. So first you have to understand the price reading and volume reading and then some indicator for trend, whether you are using a moving average line or you are using a channel or uh, it depends on you and something to understand the extent of momentum, whether you are using a RSI, you want to find stocks which are at RSI 60 plus or momentum indicator and all, it depends on you. So let us look at some of the case studies. So first in terms of idea generation, so your question will be, okay, this is good to visually analyze, but how do I need to look at 200, 2000 charts daily to analyze my idea, identify my ideas? The answer is yes and no. Some people do by weekly going through all 2000 charts. Some people have built their systems to identify, build their scanners, build their algorithms 
and uh, I rely on a lot of them. So I'm just giving you a sample example of how to build these kind of scanners. So this is a volume buster scanner. I want to play in this kind of market cap band. Below this, I don't find the liquidity enough for trade. Again, this is the scanner for liquidity. <laughs> I don't want to trade in those kind of stock where average daily trading value is less than 2 crore rupee. And what I am trying to do, I am trying to see if in last two days, the stock has traded with so much of volume, which is eight times more than last 500 days of average volume. And I'm going three days back because anyway, last two days, there is a big volume. I don't want to consider it. I am going three days back so that I don't consider last two days of volume. And from three days back, I'm going 500 days and taking the average volume multiplying by eight. So last two days of volume is greater eight times. And then my closing price is greater than opening price. That means this volume has led to a price rise. I get some seven, eight stocks on a particular date. <coughs> and then I do my manual activity and then I try to go. So like what this day, one stock came, which was Sharda Motors that day. If you see, this was the day in Sharda Motors. And then you see, then the chart reading comes. So now I am not reading chart on 2000 companies. I'm reading on maybe some 10 companies. My job is restricted. And then I can see that this zone has been a continuous resistance zone. Again and again, sellers have emerged. And despite of high volume, the stock couldn't cross it. This is the first time when the stock has crossed this level on high volume. So maybe all the supply has been nibbled. So this is how you build. So volume is just one system. It's just a pattern. If you want to crack another pattern, you have to convert that into some kind of mathematical formula. So how I converted this high volume, I am taking an average of all this volume and seeing if it is eight times. Why not eight times? It can be yeah nine times, 10 times. Uh, there is no rule that it has to be. But thing is, the more you increase the number, the lesser the universe of stocks you will get. So you will have your false positive, false negative. You have to balance it out so that your options are not too high, not too low. Now, if you look at Sharda Motors that particular day, this stock was available somewhere around 6.5 EV a beta. 6.5 EV a beta, I don't want to say it whether it's costly or whether it's cheap, but what happened after that, look at the EPS growth rate. More than 50% EPS growth rate for last two quarters for a company which is available at 6.5 times EV a beta and which has broken almost a two year resistance. And if you look at balance sheet, if you look at balance sheet, this company was sitting around uh, six, 650 crores of cash. And that time, this is the current market cap, 4,500. That time the stock price was how much? 900 rupees? Yeah, 900 rupees. So 900 rupee means almost maybe 2,500 crore to 3,000 crore market cap. So on a 3,000, 2,500 crore market cap, you had almost 700, 800, this plus investment. So basically 30% of the market cap is, uh, you know, cash. So if you exclude it, you are left with almost 2,200 crore market cap. On 2,200 crore market cap, basically you are generating almost how much? Uh, if you see this time also, 70, 80, 150. Yeah, six times a beta. So almost you are getting that. That is the cheapness you are getting. And you had this kind of earnings growth rate. The idea was this stock was beaten down because people had fear because of EV and it went so cheap that it went till 600. And then after 600, the stock started rebounding and then, uh, you know, good results. So market sends the good results. So this is how you blend technical and fundamental. So this was one example on ideation, selling and risk management. So usually we think of buying pattern. I am giving you a, another example, which is of selling pattern. I am not giving you the full scanner. This is only 50% of it because of IP reason. But what I want to highlight is any pattern which is there in the market, you can convert into a mathematics. Hmm. So if you see this move, if you remember in the beginning, we spoke about your upper wick being very, very long. And one of you rightly said, it means the suppliers have dominated the buyers. So this stock was in a strong momentum. And this is where it topped out with a very, very long wick. Usually these moves are called exhaustion move. If you follow Mark Minervini, you know, those kind of books, they talk about it, that if you have met 40, 50% in a week, this is how exhaustion moves come with very, very high volume. 
and on a single day single theme platform was a big theme in 2021 on a single day two platform stocks iex energy exchange and irctc they made very similar patterns a uh, huge up move followed by a exhaustion move with very long wick very high volume that means institutionals are dumping same happened in irctc how do you study i have built rules around to identify these kind of opportunities also if you see all these stocks that they came and the idea is never to be 100% accurate idea is just to identify so that you know okay these 10 stocks may be chances of exhaustion move iex is there uh, irctc is also there now when you blend it fundamentally iex the stock was trading at 100 pe and if you look at last three years, still the stock has not crossed that price. It's not like fundamentals have deteriorated. Still three-year performance, three-year sales cagger, 16%. Profit growth rate, 20%. The problem was platform got so much of herd mentality that people thought money can be made at any prices. But valuation is very, very important. That is what we learn. So when it was, when it was in up move, nobody cared what is the PE. It looked attracted at every PE. And when prices started falling, even at a 30, 40 P, the stock is not in momentum right now, despite of performance being there. If you look at pure fundamental, you don't know whether to exit here or whether to exit at 70 P, 80 P, 90 P. But this is where you blend both fundamental valuation and charts. And then you get a sense that maybe now this is the time to exit. So maybe you sold 30% here. Then you are seeing it's not crossing this high. Again, you sold another 30% here, another 30% there, depending on the style and you could exit. Same happened with IRCTC. I'm not taking a PE data because in COVID, most of the trains were stopped. So if you look at PE metric, uh, it will not be the right metric because your dhanda is stopped. So how can you expect a EPS? So still I am looking at some metrics. So maybe a price to sales. And then again, you see a similar kind of phenomenon. So you blend fundamental valuation and technical chart and you have better understanding of when the stock is topic out. The last use case on market cycle. So Many people think technical analysis only as support resistance 52 week high low, but there's a lot to it, lot and lot, level two, level three, level four analysis of variables. So here I have created a variable, which is percentage of nifty 500 companies, which are above their 200 day moving average. What I want to observe, what percentage of market is in uptrend? If broader market is participating in a uptrend or not and if you see when this number is very very high that means it's a high momentum market most of the stocks are in momentum and when this number is very very low that means most of the stocks are out of momentum when most of the stocks are out of momentum fallen significantly value will emerge when most of the stocks are in momentum high uptrend it's a highly trending high momentum market some say value makes money some say the momentum makes money. If you see, it's always about the process. Value also makes money. Momentum also makes money. It's always about the process. So if you have to do a value buying, maybe these could be good opportunities to you know buy value. If you have to do a momentum based investing, you have to ride the momentum till you have more and more stocks here in uptrend. The moment you have broader market stop participating, how I say, so if you have less than 50% stocks in uptrend, the chances are sooner or later your index will give up. So if you see the whole 18-19 market, when small cap, mid cap didn't make money in Nifty 500, you had more than 50% stocks in downtrend below the 200 day moving average. When the uptrend came, you had more such stocks in uptrend for almost one year. And actually, even if you see 2022, the whole 22 to 23 March when the money was not made, you see bulk of the market didn't participate. And then once Ma April 2023, you will see this number going above 50% again residing there. So when you are in a, this kind of market where broad market is not participating, your probability to make money reduces. Even if you are investing, you have to be doubly, triply sure that what you have selected is going to make money because the probability is less, very few stocks are participating. But when you are in momentum, even if you buy any stock, the chances are you will end up making money. So that is why in last one year, everybody has made money because everything has moved.
So this is how you try to see where you are in a broader market cycle, when the market cycle is topping out, uh, when the momentum is starting, when the value is emerging. These are different kinds of indicators. I just wanted to highlight technical analysis, not only about chart, but taking 500 such charts of 500 companies, studying the 200 and moving average, and then creating a metric and then tracking that metric versus market can also throw insights. And if it is high, it doesn't mean that you exit. Ride the momentum. Money is met by buying at value and riding the momentum and then exiting when the momentum is ending. So that is how you have to look at it. So more than this, if you look, then you have to read through certain books. Uh, I will suggest uh, there is a book called uh, uh, Technical Analysis of Financial Market by John Murphy. I think it is one of the best books at a very, very basic level to start with. If you have gone through this book two, three times, then you can pick something called Technical Analysis Explained by Martin Pring. Uh, but finish one basic book like John Murphy before, before touching that book. And if you want to do more than CMT books are best, start with CMT level one book and slowly graduate to level two and level three books. So with this, I will stop and now I'll open it for uh, questions. Okay. And I think my YouTube videos and some of these examples of market indicators I use, uh, I hope all of that get connected, like how I use uh, some of these indicators while making those videos on where is Nifty or you know this asset gold and all of that. So open to questions now. Uh, thank you so much, Saurabh, sir. It, it was an amazing complimentary session to all the fundamental uh, fundamental investing guys, I guess. Um, the, the Till date in the program of FinBridge and FinPlus at Finacle Institute, all of these candidates have gone through how to go about taking a look at fundamentals, but never actually use it as a complement with technical analysis to look about in terms of when to enter or when to exit. Obviously, keeping valuations in mind. So the, the, the content which you shared was amazing. Also, the pre-reading requisite materials which you shared were very, very immensely helpful. I think one of them was a logged video, which uh, we couldn't access. But from the remaining videos which we had access to, we, um, you know, we collated a couple of questions from our, uh, you know, current candidates and alumni as well. With your permission, I'd like to share the screen and maybe... Uh, if you know you can help us with answers to those questions, it would be great, sir. So um, I think some of these questions have been asked by candidates who unfortunately had to leave because of other meetings. But what I have done is I'll try to uh, you know um, I'll try to ask these questions on their behalf. And I think there are some of the candidates who have asked these questions and are present in the session. So I'll you know uh, give them the opportunity to directly interact with you accordingly. Sir, so shall I start with the questions, sir? Yeah, yeah. So the first question is in one of the videos you mentioned that you know you use Nifty 500 to judge how the overall market, broad level market, is moving, considering the fact that ninety percent of the market cap gets covered by these companies. Um, so I, 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 you know, you also rightfully during the session you showed there were three charts. One was. I guess Nifty 50, the one was Nifty uh, Gold, and then one was Small Caps, where you basically, uh, you know, you asked candidates to come up with interpretations of what they think of it. So we just wanted to ask, like, how do you go about taking a look to understand where exactly, you know, the, uh, or rather which sub-segment of the market the action currently is, or rather, let's say the right word to use is flow of money is happening. So any particular cuts which you suggest, or how do you go about taking a look at, you know, from a broad level perspective, Nifty uh, let's say Nifty 500 would do the justice. But if you want to understand the inter uh, market allocations or the flow of funds, how do you go about taking a look at that? Yeah. So see, first of all, why I use Nifty 500 is basically when you look at uh, the large cap fund, mid cap fund, small cap fund, index funds, the way they define is basically your uh, top 100 is large. Rank 101 to 250 is mid cap and 251 to 500 is small cap. And also 85 to 90 percent of the market by market cap is covered by Nifty 500 companies. So when we have to talk about the market broadly, that covers the market. So most of the times when we have to talk about the market that Nifty 500 talks. So that is the reason. But when it comes in terms of identifying this versus that or which is attractive and all, See, there is no single metric which will give you a, always a correct answer. If everything is about a single metric, 
then everybody would have used that single metric and investing life was so easy. Everybody was a millionaire. Uh, see the YouTube world, social media world is little different. You need to simplify things. You need to explain a point. If I go on a YouTube and explain with 20 indicators, people will not, most of the people may not understand anything. Also, there are certain restrictions in terms of time. Sometimes people are not interested in, you know, going through a one hour video. So that is the reason why you break into parts. Sometimes you discuss this concept. Sometimes you discuss that concept. The thing is all these things are important, but we have to understand inherently what is happening. So I use something called percentage of companies above 200 a moving average. Here, this question mentions uh, a nifty large cap versus nifty small cap. Now nifty 500 versus nifty small cap. It can also be observed through three different indicators. One indicator could be a simple price. Uh, the index movement of this versus that and you draw in trading view and some people show that number. Some people use the market cap of nifty 50 versus the market cap of nifty small cap and they say right now we are in a zone where nifty small cap is 20% of nifty 50 market cap versus the average 10%. So you see the comparison is same nifty 50 or 500, uh, you know, versus small cap, but somebody is using price. Somebody is using market cap. None of the indicators in isolation are right or wrong. It is just different way of looking at things. When you are looking at only price, you are interested in momentum. You are interested in strength. When you are looking at something like a market cap ratio, you are interested to understand the liquidity and liquidity and momentum has a relation. What will happen when the big money will infuse capital, it will take prices up. When the prices go up, momentum comes. Then you measure percentage of companies above 200 day, the number will increase. When the big money will start taking out money from a particular index, slowly the stocks, more and more stocks will become weaker. Slowly more and more stocks will break their 200 day moving line. Slowly more and more stocks will go below 200 day line. That percentage number will come on decreasing. So, Everything is interconnected, but we have to understand the logic, mathematics, sequencing behind it. So everything has a contribution, but if we understand how it is happening, then we will be able to logically connect. So if I talk of my system, I have indicators for volatility. I have indicators for trend. I have indicators for momentum. I have indicators for liquidity. And then the question come, how you build these? So how you measure liquidity? You might measure liquidity by market cap gain. You might measure liquidity by share of market cap. You might measure liquidity by amount of trading which is happening. Just go and see. And this data is available on NSC website itself. You don't yes, need to do any number crunch. Total value of shares traded in a particular month in March 2023 and December. So when there are no participant, nobody is, when market is down, nobody is interested. Nobody wants to trade. When everybody is making money, so much of money comes in the market. So there are multiple ways to study momentum, liquidity, trend, connect. And then you need to see all of this, how they are coming up together. So ideally a good system will give a view of everything. And somebody who has studied the market, he should understand in terms of chronology, how these things flow out so that you will have some of your lag indicators first. This indicator will play out. So many times a caution doesn't mean you need to get out. A caution only means that look, First thing has happened after this in next three to six months, maybe once the liquidity is being sucked out, you might see your momentum coming down and slowly that uh, right now 90% stocks are above the, uh, you know, 20, 200 day moving average, but currently it has gone down to 70. It doesn't mean index can't go up. Maybe the moment it go below 50%, I said, that is the time, you know, you should be out. So that is how you connect everything. But for that, you need to build that system which captures, you know, liquidity, market cap, valuation, trend, everything. And that is why we use all these indicators and everybody using some this indicator, that indicator. But Got when it. you look at all these indicators together, your conviction increases. Thank you so much, sir, for a detailed answer. I think in that one question, you answered three of our questions. Uh, we, in fact, had that one single question. We just wanted to understand when you mentioned market liquidity, which other aspects were you looking at? Was Were you referring to the cash volume traded or something else? So I think the question mm -hmm. number four is as well taken care of. Uh, sir, moving to the second question, um, we wanted to understand... One more caveat I will add. I will just add a caveat. 
see all this analysis which is being being done this is not a futuristic analysis see in fundamental we do a futuristic analysis whenever you analyze a valuation you, you do a dcf whatever you add some growth number for next two year four year some margin so fundamental many times is a futuristic analysis technical is past and current analysis nobody knows future and that is why in technical predicting i don't know how people predict you need to react at right time so if somebody asks me what is your selling price i don't know i will write till the trend is on because i know when i exit when the trend is out i will be safe so technical is always an analysis of current and these number if i am telling the liquidity is decreasing the liquidity might come back after two months so that is why it is all about reacting at the right time and that is why what is being analyzed right now that also needs to be continuously monitored and reanalyzed and updated every 15 20 30 days in technicals views change in one month one and a half month in fundamental we say that you know when your facts change uh, you know change your opinion but in technical uh, it changes little more frequently that is one thing we have to keep in mind differentiating between how a fundamental world versus works versus the technical world works Got it, sir. Very helpful, sir. Uh, sir, moving to the second question, we wanted to understand when you mention, like, in terms of correction, like, how do we distinguish whether it is a time correction or a price correction? Let's say if it is a zoned out, how do we know whether, you know, when the zone is going to come out? I'm sure you do take a look at multiple uh, factors. I'm not talking about indicators as such, but I'm, tr I'm trying to understand and pick your brain around the framework. How do you go about thinking on those lines? Uh, so first thing, uh, my appreciation and compliments that, uh, you know, there is a question on two types of correction because people always think correction in terms of price correction. Uh, whereas in certain asset classes, time correction is a bigger correction than price correction and gold is the best example. Uh, I don't know, but this video I didn't share, but this was, I think the last video I made on 15th of March on gold, where I have covered 50 years of gold data. And if you see gold is asset class, which can, you know, we all say that in long term money is made. There have been 19 years when the gold has given below FD return. So how long is long also becomes important. If you see FMCG kind of companies, so quality companies, which maintain the quality, when they become overvalued, they don't undergo a massive price correction. The price correction might be 30%, but the time correction could be seven, eight years. Frankly, it is very difficult to say, and that is why I say it's very difficult. Prediction is not possible. But if you look at historic patterns, and that doesn't mean historic, what, what will happen in future will be exactly what has happened in past. It may not repeat. Even the machine learning world works on the same premise that you identify data from historic patterns and you believe the same will work in future. It may happen, it may not happen. But when you look at historically, there are certain asset classes which don't move significantly. So if you look at gold as asset class, the cycle time of gold is much longer. When gold goes in bull phase, it might last 10 years. When gold goes in bear phase, it might last 10, 15 years. So you have to look at the history of the asset class, how it has behaved and you can draw clues. Uh, also, even in equity, small cap is more volatile. Small cap is more fast and furious. Even between gold and silver, when you see the volatility in silver is much higher, the price correction in silver is much higher. So you have to look at the history of that asset class. Coming in equity, a sector like a FMCG, which is more a defensive sector, quality sector, they undergo relatively lesser price correction and they might undergo more time correction. But stocks which are volatile, asset classes which are volatile, uh, they might undergo higher price correction as well as time correction. Other way to look at is, of course, valuation. Because see, all this technical analysis and patterns, they're made by big guys, right? And big guys decide based on valuation, based on market cycle. Some sectors have a shorter market cycle. Some sectors have a longer market cycle. If you see business of rice, business of automobile, automobile is a three, four year market cycle. Versus a real estate is more like a six to eight year market cycle. So you have to understand the sector, ki us sector ka historically cycle kaise drive hota hai. You have to understand the drivers of that sector. So you have to understand that and that will also help you to decide whether there could be a price. And again, with all this, let me tell you, it's very difficult to predict these things, but you can still have 
some estimate whether you are expecting more price or time or combination of both. The third is the valuation part. So like, let me take example of company like a symphony. So what we saw in a platform company like IEX and IRCTC, same was in symphony in 2015, because the idea was India is 5% penetrated. We have to do comparison with the US and China. Se. India is 5% penetrated, that means pay any price. So people paid 120 PE for Symphony, that is a brand. And what happened after five years, the 30% margin came down to 15%. After two players, there were 20 more players and the growth suffered. And then 120 PE came down to 30 PE. So when you have that kind of overvaluation, to come at reasonable valuation, it will need huge, either huge price correction or a price or time correction. So it's going through both. See in IRCTC and IEX, both companies I showed you data. They have grown last three years with 20%. Still, it, they have corrected also by 50%. Still, they have not come back to old price. So after a point when the price corrections happened, it is undergoing its own time correction. And in that time correction, the EPS growth is happening. So basically your reasonable valuation comes both by price correction and by time correction, because during that time, your EPS also performs. If the EPS performance is good and the business cycle is smaller, your time correction will be smaller. But if your business cycle is longer or your valuation gap is longer, your time correction will also be higher. So depending on case to case basis, you have to do all this analysis. And the idea is to be roughly right than being, you know, exactly correct or totally wrong. Brilliant, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much for that detailed answer. So in justice of time, I'm going to skim through a couple of questions where I yeah. feel some of the content has already been covered in the lectures. So the candidates will be able to get their answers. Uh, so one very interesting question we uh, we wanted to ask. In one of your videos, you mentioned that an indicator is tracking percentage of companies above and below 200 DMA. So we wanted to understand a bit more on this indicator. How do you go about taking a look at the same? Yeah, so see... Uh... Usually we always see a number ki itne se jada hai to ye itne se jada hai to kam. Uh, many times you miss the trend of that. And I think when I did the presentation and let me just show you that chart again, if I can yeah. show or yeah, let me just show you that chart again. If you see this chart, I have drawn zones. And I'm not telling when it comes in this zone, then you exit, then how will you write the momentum? So the idea is to capture how the momentum is getting weaker. I don't care till we are in momentum. I don't care whether it, and that is where I'm telling that we all love prediction. It is never about prediction. It is about reaction. I don't want to predict whether it will last for one month or one year or 10 years till it is there. I'm happy to write where I will be watchful when I see this getting weaker. If you see here, Earlier, more than 92% were stronger than 90%, then 80%. See, the index is still there. Index is being maintained by fewer and fewer and fewer stocks. But if you see this data, you know, the market, the broader market is weakening. And that is why many times those who trade or invest, you'll know the index is still at high, but the portfolios are not doing well because bulk of the stocks have stopped participating. It's those seven stocks which constitute 50% of index that is keeping it up. So this is where you have to look for the loss of momentum. And then the moment it starts going below 60%. So, as, and that is why it is very difficult to say, I mean, hundred percent cash or I'm, you know, hundred percent invested. That is where the role of asset allocation comes. What I do is if here I am hundred percent in small cap here, maybe I'll be 80% in small cap and 20% in large cap here. Maybe I'll be in 50% small cap and 50% large cap or some cash or whatever. So the idea is to maintain a balance rather than, you know, doing the perfect prediction. But yeah, this is a zone of momentum till we are strong. Good. The moment you see this weakening with very high valuation and liquidity slowly drying up and on charts, you are seeing continuous resistance. There is a chance to be cautious. This is like your, you know, no man's land, but don't expect any momentum here. And the moment you get these kind of opportunities, these are the times when everybody is scared to invest, but in hindsight, if you look at 100 years of data across world market, these sometimes prove out to be the best of the markets for value buyers. So that is how you have to look at it. So you should set your expectations right when you have to expect momentum, when you have to expect value. And you know, when it is a sideway market where it may not go anywhere. So that is how you have to use this, uh, you know, in your judgment. Okay. Got it, sir. Got it, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sir. Um, 
sir i think uh, in the interest of time already overdue i'll i'll uh, i think there's one candidate in class who has a uh, question yet submitted maybe uh, dhruv you can, you can ask send me the final questions what i will do is i'll do a voice recording and i will send it to arushi and she yes, can sir. circle it so you will have all the answers of the questions which are not yet answered brilliant sir thank you thank you so much sir sir just one last question for the day sir if you'd yeah. allow uh dhruv uh yes, maybe yeah Yeah, sir. Yeah. Thank you so much for the uh, opportunity, sir. Uh, so actually, I was uh, during your session, and uh, you said about fundamental valuations and technical analysis can be connected somewhere. So, uh, two questions actually related to it. Uh, in one of our previous sessions, uh, at Finacle itself with Kenneth Andre, sir, we were actually having an interesting discussion on techno funda investing, and he said you can't size up a position based on technicals and fundamentals. uh because technicals and fundamentals are somewhat contradicting so do you feel it is tough to use techno funda on stocks below a certain market cap because they can be highly volatile because of their liquidity concerns so again it depends person to person so i, I told you when i showed you my price volume some system remember there was a line i am not even looking at stocks where average daily trading value is not below 2 crore why because i believe those stocks can be manipulated so all these statements again i i don't think either kenneth sir has a number to prove that statement or i i will have mm -hmm. but i can talk based on my experience that all these things are very personal uh i don't want to trade in such stocks because i believe there is not enough liquidity i believe there is uh, there could be chances of manipulation but somebody with a smaller portfolio size might be okay because for him a 1 lakh position might be, be his best position so it might work that is point number 1 second uh, position building and technical and fundamental doing contradictory things uh, again see there could be times when they are contradictory and there could be times when both are telling the same thing so that is why i told you when you have two different data points and both are telling you the same thing your level of conviction increases so i said in stand alone both the things might give some can both are giving the see worldwide if you see the traders have also made money the investors have also made money on one side you have a warren buffett who tell don't sell quickly other side you have a jim simons who whose average selling period is two days so it is never about the style and that is why i am open to all styles of investing it is always about the process and when you get into the process nuances then it matters same technical analysis doesn't work for one person it works for other same fundamental a trader successful trader will tell i started with fundamental i stopped it who will learn 2000 companies a uh, mm -hmm. investor will tell who will every day monitor 2000 charts so it's all individual process and the answers will differ person to person my mm -hmm. suggestion would be you study all the fields you are in the uh, you know age of learning you study everything and you imbibe what is behaviorally aligned to your process and what helps and there will be something you will be able to discard and there is something you will be able to imbibe like i said i imbibe my technical analysis in selling in sectors where my conviction level is low there might be stocks where i discard the technical analysis because i have that conviction i might be right or wrong that separate and there are sectors i have decided that i am going to exit on the basis of technical analysis so i myself you will see i am contradictory i am having two different views but that view has so never go with the absolute statement the problem with generalization is it doesn't work all the places so the only thing i would say is i will never agree to one generalized statement because it's all about nuances and you will have to find your nuances for your style, your style of investing got it sir thank you so much that answers my question so yeah thank you so much sarat sir for giving us an opportunity to learn from you i hope we get to similar opportunities in future as well and uh, you know we'd like to further uh, develop our understanding in this domain along with our students only to make sure that we keep learning and growing in a scientific manner sure sure i mean uh, your course is totally dedicated to market so you know there can't be a better place than it for you know for me to interact uh, so i would love to and my best wishes to all of you and hopefully i will get time to and opportunity to work with some of you okay thank you so much sir thank you for thank your thank you time. so much for your time today sir we are really really thanks, grateful thanks for this opportunity thank you so much thanks and thanks to you know the administrators for you know giving me this platform it was wonderful interacting with all of you
Thanks. Thanks. Bye-bye.